Hello, everyone. How's everybody doing? I hope you all have a good evening. Well, first of all, my name is David Bonilla, and I'm come before you uh, to give thanks all glory to God, first and foremost, for allowing me to, to, um, to share the message with you all. Second of all, I want to thank Bishop for allowing me to take his pulpit. Bishop, I don't take that lightly. I take it as a great honor. Thank you so much for allowing me to do so. Can we all stand for the word of God, please? And the title of my message is The Power of Influence. If you go to your, your Bible to the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 3. I mean, I'm sorry, verse thir 13. The word of God says, The members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, for they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. Lord God, as we come together and assemble, Father God, together. And Father, we just give you all the glory and honor to be here, Father God, and to receive your word, Father God. And let it remain in us, Father God, as we receive it, let it be a blessing to us, Father God, as well, Lord God, as we, leave, as we leave this place, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The introduction of my message is who you are, what you are, and where you are today is because you were under the influence of certain people. Yes, we can have influences by others. You may think about that for a moment. To my first point, who is watching you? So in the first part of the scripture that I just read in, in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. So according to the members of the council, they were amazed when they saw the bonus of Peter and John. Those two words, amaze and bonus, just stand out to me. They were being watched. Those members of, uh, of the council uh, must have been watching them. They witnessed something that was powerful that took place within Peter and John. But the second part of the message of the scripture, I meant, it says they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. You may ask, how could that be? You know, I find that interesting as well as I was reading this. But it just tells you that um, it's because they were had an influence by a person whose name is Jesus. To my second point, remember where you were and where you are now. Just think about that for a moment. Where you were and where, you're, where you are now. See, there was a change in Peter and John's lives that had taken place. There was just something about them that those, uh, the council members had, had noticed. Let me ask you this. Have you ever noticed something different about someone you know? Could it could be a positive influence that they had on, uh, that they, a positive influence that they had, somebody had on them? Or it could be even a bad influence. Just see, there's two different influences, good and bad. But we know that Peter and John, it was all good. My third point is, who is your influence? Again, think about that for a moment. Who is your influence? The company you, the company you keep influences your thinking you know the bible does say that uh, so a man thinketh so he is in the book of proverbs 
But if you ever, if you, if you ever heard this quote coming from your parents, it may not sound exactly how I'm going to say it to you, but maybe to some extent, or maybe the exact. Parents would say to their kids, show me your friends and I'll, sh and I'll tell you who you are. Does that sound familiar? I know my parents told me, told me that and said certain things about the friends I hung around with that were influencing me and that's, they were noticing it. And parents can tell whether it's good or bad. But God can tell too. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, uh, verse 20. Walk with the wise and become and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Mm. Well, that right there. So true. So true. But I love the book of Proverbs. It's, it just has a lot of wisdom. But listen to this. To be under the influence means to be controlled by something or someone other than yourself. Let me say that again. To be under the influence means to be controlled by something or someone other than yourself. The Webster's Dictionary definition of influence itself, just the word influence, is the power to change or affect someone or something. The power to cause changes without directly forcing them to happen. A person or thing that affects someone or something in an important way. You probably can be thinking about who, you know, who had a major influence on you. I mean, I can name people right now um, that had a major influence on me. You know, my dad, you know, was a good influence on me. I mean, as far as his, his work ethics and stuff, he was such a hard worker. And that's, you know, I, I, he influenced me. He influenced me the way he worked and stuff um, and how he was really a, a um, he, he was a great. He was a he was a great influence on me when it came to his work ethics. He was just a hard worker. He made he he uh, his own boss even told him that um, I was watching you, Dave, and uh, I noticed that you, you you made he made every move count. And you know what he told me? He says, you know what? Our boss Clarence told us told me told me right now that you know what you make. I was watching you making every move count, David. And my dad told me that's what you need to do with your life, David. Is to make every move count. That was powerful. I'll never forget that. I want to say this. If you're really wise, you'll spend time under the influence of Jesus. You'll read his word, spend time with him in prayer. And indeed. The more time you spend with him, the more you become like him. Amen? Just think about that. This is why I am the man that I am today, because I did the exact thing. I made those moves count, like my dad told me. I made the right choice. That would, I'll never forget that. Something that always will stick with me. There's some things that are going to stick with you because somebody influenced you. Now, my fourth point under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Let's go back a little bit to the book of Acts in chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. When the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, they were transformed to the extent that some folks thought they were drunk. There's a difference between being under the influence of, of substance abuse or, or, or alcohol. How about TV? How about the internet? How about even pornography? And I mean, the list goes on. Things like that, they can have influences. This is why we need to we need to play play uh, I mean pay close attention to what our kids are watching on TV. 
And I want you to know, we need to do that. But listen to what Peter said. Peter said, these people are not drunk. Let me just say that again. These, pe these people are not drunk as you suppose. In some scriptures, in some translations, they'll say, as you assume. It's only not in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Job. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. That's powerful, everyone. He says he's going to pour out his spirit. God wants us to be under the influence of his Holy Spirit. Peter and John, according to the, according to the scripture in chapter, uh, uh, in Acts chapter 13, I'm not sorry, chapter 4, verse 13. The, the last part of that scripture says they also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Let me just share something real quick. On a Christmas Eve with my family, we were all spending time together and stuff. Okay. Right when the kids were going to open their gifts, I, I said, you know what? I'm going to do something different. I was telling myself. So, you know what? I wanted to have an influence on my family to do something a little different. We celebrate Christmas. And, and you know what? What I, what, I, what, what I did is that my sister had a, a beautiful major, you know, um, set up in her living room and stuff. And the Lord put in my heart to share this. And I told my daughter to read the birth of Christ in the book of Luke. And when she read that, everybody was like in a, in a pause. My dad was, you know, had his, had his, you know, his beer in his hand. He actually put it down, put his hands, and he just like gave reverence to the whole message, to the message that my daughter was reading. And so I picked up that little baby Jesus. And I went to the kids and I said, I know you guys will open your presents. That was all good. But who is this precious gift right here? All the kids said, Jesus. They all yelled. I said, who is it again? They said, Jesus. I looked up and I seen my dad literally in tears. And I rarely see my dad cry. I think the only time I seen him cry was twice in my lifetime. I'm really, I'm being honest with you. Not only that, everybody else had to see my brother along. Everybody was so touched. It was an atmosphere that changed. And I, I believe I, I ushered in the anointing of the Holy Spirit and, and on Christmas Eve with my family. My dad came up to me and he says, you know, David, I got to tell you something. I thank God that you're a man of God. He put his hand on my shoulder and told me that. And he looked, he said, and then he said, he pointed to my mom. He said, see that woman right there? She's my blessing. Wow, it was just a different change in my dad. What a, what a beautiful thing to hear. So I say this to you. Today, the Holy Spirit, who is simply the influence of of Christ can transform your life. How many want the influence of Jesus Christ to transform your life? Raise your hand. Amen. Repeat after me. Say, Dear God, I come to you as a sinner and I confess that I am a sinner. Lord, I believe you, you died on the cross and you shed your blood so that I can become whole that you arose on the third day so that I can have hope. Transform my life, dear Lord God, and keep me under the influence of your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. If you receive that, you are now saved. Praise God.
God bless everyone.